Hello again. I give you an example for joint probability distribution and will apply the concept of calculating expected value for discrete joint probability distribution. But before that, as we know, the formula for joint probability distribution, it is a dependency of two random variables. In general, we consider for this course module. So two random variables are considered in this joint probability distribution. So I will apply the concept of expected mean and expected variance for the given distribution. So look at the example. In the joint probability distribution, if both the random variables are discrete, both are discrete, then there you have to calculate either the expected value of x variable or the expected value of y variable y variable. So if you are calculating for the x variable, the first of all we have to find out the marginal probability density function for x that is that is gx. We already know the procedure for calculating gx. gx is gx is nothing but summation of f x comma y over the range of y. For y it is a different issue. In case of continuous probability distribution gx is nothing but integration minus infinity to infinity f x comma y for the range of dy. So once you know the value of marginal probability and the sample space of x uh, variable, you can calculate the expected value of x, mu x or you call E x. The same thing will apply for the continuous probability distribution. Now look at the example, it will be more clear to you. A delivery truck travels from point A to point B and back using the same route every day. There are four traffic lights on the route. Let X1 denote the number of red lights the truck encounters going from A to B. And X2 denote <coughs> the, the number of traffic lights encountered on the way back from B to A. So these were the number of traffic lights encountered when going from A to B. And these were the traffic lights and counters when coming back from B to A. The probability of occurrence of 0, 0 is 0 0.01. Occurrence of 0, 1 is 0 0.01. Let's see this is a distribution. This will be distribution only if then sum of fx comma y over the range of x and y must be equal to 1. So if we see the summation of all this will come down to 1. We are sure about this. So first they are asking to find out the marginal density of x1. So that is what they want to get x1 and g x1. So x1 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. What will be the value for g x1 is nothing but the summation over this range. So that will be equal to, let's have a different color. 0 0.0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.12, 0 0.13. That is 0.13. What is the 0.08, 0.16, 0.19, 0.21. So that is 0.21. Then we can have here partitions. This will be 0 0.14, 0 0.29, 0 0.30, 0 0.31. So this is 0 0.31, then 0 0.09, 0 0.19, 0 0.22. So this all comes equal to 1.0. That gives us satisfaction that the probability distribution has summation equal to 1. So this is 
So this was the marginal distribution, marginal density function for x1. Now for x2, h x2, let's have h here, this one, summation of this 0 0.04, 0 0.07 and 0 0.10. Here 6, 17, 24, 30. Count down here 0 0.4, 0 0.79, 0 0.79 and 6, 0.85 and this comes equal to 1. Now just write it over here 0, 1, 1, 5 and 0 0.06. Now what next in the problem is expected value for, so this is done, expected value for x1. So this will be nothing but summation over x1, x1, g, x1. That will give us a value 0 multiplied by 0 0.13 plus 1 multiplied by 0 0.21. That will give us a value equal to so expected value of e x1 is 2.0. So now if you have to calculate the expected value for this is done EX2 that will be nothing but equal to summation over the range of X2 X2 H X2 that will be equal to 0 multiplied by 0 0.10 plus 1 multiplied so this comes about 1.77. So now this part is done. Now see here, what they want in the next part is, the given the conditional density distribution for x1 given x2. So they are talking about conditional probability. Conditional probability. What is conditional probability? We know that it is nothing but probability of A given B is nothing but the probability of A and B divided by probability of B. Now in our case what they want is probability for x1 when x2 is given 3. So they want distribution for x1 given x2 equal to 3. So that will be nothing but f x1 comma 3 upon h3. So looking at this, the possibilities for this distribution for a specific value of x1, x1 possibilities are 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and this will be f x1 for a specific value of x2 equal to 3. I have already explained what the conditional probability is. So for 0 what will be the condition? For 0 value of x1 0 value of x1 is this, for x2 equal to 3, the AND probability is 0 0.07 and the probability of x2 equal to 3, hx3 is 0.15. So the probability of occurrence of x1 with respect to x2 equal to 3 will be 0 0.07 divided by 0 0.15. So it will be One five, and the next will be 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.15, 0 0.01, 0 0.03, 0 0.01. So that will come as. Now this was the fourth part of the problem, which fifth part of the problem rather, give the conditional probability distribution for this. Now if we have to find out the expected value of this, it will be based on the same distribution. Let's see here what will be 
the expected value of x1 given that x2 equal to 3. So that is nothing but 0 multiplied by 7 by 15 plus 1 multiplied by 3 by 15. So this will be give us a value as 15. So 3 plus 2 plus 9 plus 12. 26 by 15. So 1 into 11 by 15. So the expected value is between 1 and 2 over here. In the last part, they want the standard deviation for x1. So for standard deviation of x1, so now from this distribution, from this distribution, we have to find out the standard deviation. That will be square root of sigma. And if we have to calculate sigma square, that is expected value of x minus x1 minus mu x1 square that is equal to summation x1 minus mu x1 square f x1 or g x1 rather over the domain of x1. So that value summation square will be equal to 0 minus what is the expected value of x1 was 2. So it was 2, already calculated 2. So 0 minus 2 square multiplied by 0 0.13 plus 1 minus 2 is multiplied by 0 0.12. So that will give us a value 4. 4 multiplied by 0 0.13 plus that will be 1.232. So this is done. So this was a sample procedure for calculating the expected value even in the case of joint probability distribution. We started from the simple probability distribution and then we moved to discrete, continuous and joint probability distribution. So these are the examples which will help you to find out the expected value in case of joint probability distribution. If we get time, we will take more examples to share with you. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Good luck.